with us today. We've been missing quite a few here lately, but it's been some pretty rough preaching. Uh, when you preach the word like it's written, without compromise, a lot of times folks don't want to hear it. But I've got a command from the Lord to preach the word. The instant in season, out of season. And so whenever I'm ready or whenever I'm not ready, i got to preach it because it's always season for the Lord. Amen. I heard some old rednecks from up around Franklin. They was all gathered in D's one day talking about hunting. And uh, said one of them was talking about killing a deer. And they said, well, don't you know seasons don't happen? And he says, from where I'm from, we only got two seasons. That's salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've never been to Franklin, you've got a good place to come visit one day. Psalm 2. Only way, I, only way I can talk about it because I married into it. <laughs> you better not go outside talking about it. You have a whole clan, man. <laughs> Psalm 2. When you find it, get on your feet if you're able for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 2. Rather, rather different sermon today. I told my wife coming as I began to study and study. I said, I ain't never preached upon this before. I said, you want to preach it? And she said, no, so... I guess I'll have to do the preaching. But we're praying that the Lord will come by and do the preaching. Can we get an amen? amen? How many enjoys the presence of the Lord? Amen. i tell you what, if you've never experienced that, you don't know what you're missing. It is something that drugs can't compete with. Um, alcohol can't touch it. There's nothing that i found on this earth that can compare with the presence of the Lord. Psalm 2, thank you for standing in reverence to reading God's word. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed say, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. That word means to ridicule, a mockery. The Lord's mocking at them. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. Somebody say wrath. wrath. And vex them in his sore displeasure. That word vex means to trouble. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. Somebody say kiss. Yes. That's what I'm preaching upon this morning. <laughs> Kisses. Lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Pray with me today. Father, I thank you for this opportunity and this privilege and high honor it is to stand behind the holy sacred desk. Lord, that's called the pulpit of wood. Lord, we pray today, Lord, that you would anoint this minister as I come before you as humble as I know how. Lord, I ask you to take these clay lips. Put the coals of fire upon these clay lips, that, Lord, that my tongue may be the pen of a ready writer, that I may speak the things that become sound doctrine, Lord, and that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you please, and it will prosper in the thing whereto you send it. Father, and I pray today for clarity, Lord, of a peace and a sound mind behind this pulpit. Satan would come to steal me, kill me, and destroy me, but you came that I might have life. And that I might have it more abundantly. And I pray today, Lord, that it would be liberty in this house. The Bible said, the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord at, there is liberty. I pray for the abundance of my heart that my mouth will speak. And my heart may be filled with love. And I'll give you praise and glory. Lord, don't let nobody leave this sanctuary lost. Holy Ghost, arrest them. Prove, draw them. The Bible said they can't come to the Father except they be drawn by your Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would work with me or I'd rather I would work with you today as you have your way in this sanctuary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big old hand clap of praise for his word today. Come on, make some racket. Make some racket like Alabama and Auburn State. You've never heard before. Come on, say I ain't got enough blood in my hands to make that much racket. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My title today is pretty self-explanatory. It's in the scripture, Kiss the Sun. 
Lord, lay this upon my heart. I began to want to dig my fingers in my ear and say, Lord, are you sure this is the message for this week? Kiss you? Never been laid such a title upon my heart, but the Lord began to allow me to research this and dig into this a little bit, and I hope and pray that I have something to share with you today. In this prophecy of the second chap, a second psalm, we would say, this is a prophecy of the coming, the triumph of the King of Jesus. Coming, and you know, I thought about this the other day when I heard a comment about how that the um, the storms and the things that are taking place in America nowadays are related to this and are related to that. And they're trying to do something with the global warming, and they want to fix this, and they want to fix that. And he, and he he pretty much made it pretty simple where a country boy can understand. And he says, you know, they don't need to worry about fixing this and fixing that. It's a sin problem, and if we would hit our face before the Lord once again, He would take all this stuff from us. You see, the Bible plainly tells us that the wages of sin is death. And the Bible said, God is not a man that he should be mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow seeds of sin, you will reap it. Whether it's privately or, 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 or individually or corporately, you're going you're gonna to reap the consequences. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 5, where Paul the Apostle came and addressed the Corinthian church of some of the ones that were uh, having fornicate relationship with step-parents. And he began to tell the people, he said, why have you overlooked stuff like this? He said, you know, you need to address stuff like this and get this kind of stuff out of your church. Nowadays, you talk about kicking somebody out of church and they'll kick the pig preacher out of the pulpit. But I'm telling you today that the Apostle Paul kicked him out of church. Oh, you ain't clapping now. I'll say something here in a minute. It might get you fired up. And he, he addressed this. He said, man, this ain't even named among the Gentiles. He said, sinner folks don't even try to act like this all the time. He said, if they have a fornicate relationship, at least it's not with their step-parents. Come on, bro. How is it that the church gets so far out that they begin to live worse than the world besides like the world? And I'll tell you very clearly, we've been preaching pretty stout here lately and the Lord of help, we're going to keep on doing it. He said that when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he seeketh dry places. And when he comes back, he finds the place swept and garnished, but it's empty. I've been given a charge to our church here lately that you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't need to get ankle deep. You don't need to get knee deep. You don't need to get loin deep. You need to find you some waters to swim in. You need to get deep in Christ. You need to get rooted. You need to get filled. I never recall going to a bar room just for a casual drink. I didn't go just to have a little sip. I went to get intoxicated. And I think God knew that when He spoke to me in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. and said, Be ye not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Boy, if we could drink on God like we used to drink on them Budweiser's. We start acting a little bit different in church. We'd act like drunk Christians. We got too many messed up churches because we got too many sober Christians. They're all sophisticated and sitting back with their clean clothes. You knew he snatched you out of the miry clay. Come on. We're all clean and sober in our right mind. Praise God I'm not telling you to go out and get drunk and call yourself a drunk Christian. I'm talking about getting drunk in God, getting filled with God, getting deeper in God. But there's a problem for the people who decides that I just want a little Sunday morning dab to do me. I don't want nothing else to do with God. I, I don't want to pray through the weekdays. I don't want to read the Word through the weekdays. I just want a Sunday morning relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's where this second psalm comes to fit you. Because the Bible said when that unclean spirit came back and he found that 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 temple was swept and it was garnished. And the old the old prophet of Isaiah said, Though your sins was red as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. There's only one thing that can cleanse you from sin. And we sing it in the hymn, What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen today? I will not stand with Oprah Winfrey and say he is a way. I'm going to stand with the Bible and say he is the way. There's no other way to come to the Father but it be by faith of Jesus Christ. You must watch 
people nowadays, they'll try to tell you you can have Jesus Christ, but if there's another way and it'll do you good, just go that way too. Hogwash. That's what Satan... See, Satan don't come to tell you just a, a, a bald-faced lie. He tells you a, a, a little lie. You said there ain't no such thing as a little lie. I believe it is. He tells you a little lie. It's got a little truth mixed with it. And he deceives you. Matter of fact, he even says that his ministers in his pulpits are transformed to angels of light. Man, they got great swelling words and enticing words. You can tell by now, I don't know how to speak right. So I don't fit in that category. I don't entice you with how good I can speak. But he said that these angels would, would transform the angels, or these ministers would be transformed to angels of light. But inside, they're full of ravenous wolves. They're, they're full of dead man's bones. And and, and, you know, when you hear people say that, you know, well, Jesus is a good, a good influence. If he'll help you, then go with that. But if you if you find something other else good for you, go with that too. No. Jesus plus nothing. Amen. He is the way. Oh, some of you didn't get that. I said he is the way. The only way. But there's something other else you need to do when you get saved. You need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. I said you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Does that mean I'll speak in tongues? According to the Bible, you're going to speak in tongues. You're going to act crazy? All of the Pentecost act crazy. Had the whole world saying they were drunk folks. So, they talking about you anyhow. You already here. You done showed up to a crazy church. You'd be surprised what they're going to say about you now. If you're going to come, you might as well enjoy yourself while you're here. Don't you know today that if they saw Preacher Man's car at the bar tonight, don't you know they're going to talk about me? Oh, Lord, I seen my friend. He must have fell off the wagon. I seen him back down there at the bar room. I don't worry it'd be tonight. I don't worry the bar door going to come tonight. Do I don't know. They used to do. They might do it now. Anyhow. I seen him down there at the bar room. No, you did. Yes, I did, child. You should have seen me out of here. Brother Brandon, Brother Brandon. Now, he wasn't dressed up like he normally does. He was in his street clothes, but you should have seen him. Maybe the Lord laid upon my heart to go in there and witness somebody at the bar stool. Uh oh, it got quiet here. Oh, you can't even swallow it. Witness at the bar room? Jesus go to the bar room. Oh, my God. The Holy Ghost goes to the bar rooms. I got three folk preaching with me. Now everybody else can quit. So you telling me, y'all, you ones that are quiet, that the Holy Ghost can't save nobody in the bar room, right? I believe God can save anybody, anywhere, anytime, and He ain't got to go through a board to ask somebody. But if I go to the bar room, God doesn't be leaving me. I'm going to be led by the Spirit. I ain't been there yet. No plan on going. Let's Lord leave me there. Because if I go there, more likely, I'm going there to drink. That's what folks go to a bar to do. You look out, you look out in a bar with no drink in your hand. What are you, the designated driver or something? You look weird. I think church folk look weird going to church and don't have church. I think it was weird. Amen. When we come to church, we ought to have church. You can hear me. I said when we come to church, we ought to come to church to have church. Somebody say, excuse me. It's just about happy hour. Some of y'all say, we got this and act right, boy. We always got visitors, angels, and camp around about those to fear. The first kiss that I want to talk about is a kiss of respect. We're gradually losing respect in the United States of America. If we have any at all, or some of the older generation that knew what a belt was coming up. If you didn't have respect, that belt will teach you respect. Whether you liked it or whether you didn't. The Bible says, spare the rod. You don't know any other scripture, do you? <laughs> you learned that when that child got hard here, didn't you? Hey, preacher man, what's that scripture say? I can whoop my child. <laughs> 
1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, talked about a kiss of respect, of their own respect. Here Elijah was dealing with people that felt like they had turned their back upon God. He felt like he was the only prophet that was left. You know, you know when he was in the cave running from the woman and, and uh, Jezebel, and God said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah starts to have this big old pity part. I'm the only one, Lord. Only one that haven't turned my back on you, Lord. I don't know what's going on with your church. Everybody else don't even want to come to church no more. I'm the only one. God said, get out of that cave. Amen. I got all kind of prophets that hadn't bowed the knee to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it made something other else mentioned in verse number 18, 1 Kings 19 and 18. Says, yet have I left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. As I begin to think of how I'm going to explain to you, kiss the sun, I thought to myself, even back then, they didn't have very many opportunities to literally kiss Jesus Christ. You don't see Jesus Christ, you would look crazy going through the church. <laughs> Trying to kiss somebody you can't see. And obviously, if it's that hard to find out how to kiss him, then that's not exactly what it's meaning, is it? So we'll begin to dig into it. And there's a few kisses that I want to talk about. All you teenagers, quit looking at your parents right now because that's not one of the kisses that I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. We may address those as well. Luke chapter 7, verse 38. I preached about this woman Wednesday night about her was supposed to be preached about, this lady was supposed to be preached about everywhere that the gospel is to be taken for a memorial of her and something that she did when she broke the alabaster box and the Bible said that she stood in his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. I don't know where my little girl got this from, but she don't like feet. She hates feet. I put my foot on her on the couch. She'll just about jump up out the couch. And so if she had to kiss the feet of Jesus, I might not want to see my girl in eternity. I don't know. I hope I would. Kissing feet. She don't even like feet on her, much less kissing feet. But when you get to a desperate place in your life that you need some higher power help, you don't care what you have to do. Amen? You begin to humble yourself before folk. Some folk can't feel God because they too feel with pride. Amen. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have nobody. You know, one of the one of the biggest fight starters back when I was in school, because I was talking about folks' as mama. <laughs> was somebody spitting on you. Woo, woo. It would be War War Three in the in the bathrooms. I don't want nobody spit on me now. But if I had an ear that I couldn't hear out of, or if I had some eyes that I couldn't see out of, and Jesus spit on some dirt, rubbed it together, and when to put it on my eyes, when I get desperate enough, I'll let spit be put on my eyes and I might can see again. Amen? And so sometimes God takes you through a process of your life where you are humiliated to make you come to the place that I need the Lord. I believe there's a lot of folks in church feel like that they can make it without the Lord. You may not say you can make it without the Lord, but... Uh, life has a way of blessing you and sometimes our blessings be can become our curses because a lot of folk don't know how to handle their blessings. Amen? Amen. There's a lot of pe people that preach upon prosperity and the doom and gloom of prosperity. I don't believe there's nothing wrong with having money. Amen? Amen. I believe you can have a bunch of it as long as it don't have you. Praise God. Amen. I believe the Lord said he wished for love above all things that we may prosper and be in good health as our souls prosper. And you know, but I'm not telling you today that broke Christians can't go to heaven. I'm not going to preach that. And I'm not going to have a TV ministry telling you to send me $25 or, oh no, they don't even do that no more. I think it's thousands of dollars now. And God's going to bless you and bless you and bless you. Let me tell you something. You don't have to give a dime for the Lord to bless you because he spent it all at Calvary and paid every bit of it with his blood. We've been bought by a precious price. Come on, somebody. I said the blood of Jesus is sufficient. I'm so thankful that a drug addict as 
asked myself was, I didn't have no money to give God. He'd done everything I could do to rake and scrape and pay my tithes. Broke country boy that didn't make a whole lot of money coming off drugs and drug dealers rolled around with my money. I'm so thankful that I didn't get to Jesus and he said you got to have so many thousands of dollars for a seed offering before you can get saved. I'm so thankful he saves poor folks. He saves rich folks. He saves pretty folks. He saves ugly folks. Somebody say amen. He saved big folk, little folk, white folk, black folk. He'll save anybody. He said he came to save the world. He so loved the world. He even came to save the predestined ones, the unfair. Glory be to God. Some folks say that some folk can't be saved. Because they was predestined to go to hell. They need to read their Bibles. That's a little bit better. We're not going to get on all that. That's a doctrine of disagreement. We're going to preach the word. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you do ye even so to them for this is the law of the prophets. Man that's respect. Amen. If you don't want nobody disrespecting you don't you disrespect no one else. That's fundamental behavior tips. If you want folks to be nice to you be nice to them. If you want friends, show yourself friendly. Amen. Amen. If you want people not to talk to you, don't talk to them. They'll surely ignore you. What's their problem? They're stuck up. Amen. Now I will say we got some folks that don't like to talk. And I will say we got some folks that love you. The ones that do like to talk taking up their slack, baby, they don't have a chance to talk. How many has ever heard that one-way conversation? Uh, you know, went back to grade school, you're raising your hand. Can I say something? Yeah. Let's eat. If you want somebody to talk with you, you're going to hush your now. Now I'm a long-winded preacher. You'll find that out here for long. You already found out. I ain't heard say nothing in church all her life. She just said something. But she don't know the best thing over, oh boy. Face is red. That ain't But when you see people who really, really like to talk, yeah. wave your hand, and come on now, you know what I'm talking about. They really, 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 really like to talk. That's me. <laughs> 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 now, Mr. Marvin then said that, and I'm trying to preach, and you don't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> But there's some people like to talk more, Mr. Marvin. Y'all know him? <laughs> but sometimes what I'm trying to say is, is you don't have time enough in the day to talk to some folks. Because if you get on the phone with them, they won't let you go. They ain't got nothing else to do but to talk. And you got 15,000 things to do that day and then they get mad at you. Why did you stay on the phone with me no money to do? <laughs> An hour? Come on! How much longer do you want to stay on the phone? Oh, Brother Randy, stuck up. <laughs> he wasn't talking to me the other day. Stuck up, stuck up preacher. You think he's something to the stuck up preacher. <sighs> it's all to do with respect. You'll be shocked at the friends that you can have when you begin to respect folk. Because everybody ain't got the time you got. That's right. Amen. Amen. And you know the Lord's been dealing with me on a message, but I'm going to study, study for it before I, before I preach it. But there's a scripture that just kind of uh, put in my heart, and you may have read it, but it's talking about making friends of the unrighteous man. And I don't know if you've ever read that scripture before. But you know, when folks get saved, they don't, they don't act like they need nobody else but save folks. They only want lost folks working for them. They don't want lost folks nowhere around. Uh -huh. 
blessing God. But the Bible teaches us that there might be the same type of folks that end up helping you one day. That's right. Now, honey, there's a good Samaritan. <laughs> so watch how you treat folks. Amen. Make sure you respect people. Now, it's not it's not in the Bible that I know of. Oh, matter of fact, the other teachings in the Bible, but you know, Jesus says, let your yeas be yay. and your nays be. Yay. But coming up, if you said yay to an older person, you got yah on the other end. Come on. <laughs> Jesus said, say yay, but I didn't say yay, I said yes, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. New generation don't have a clue. What's he talking about, Daddy? Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I tell you something. Other else that was taught coming up. Am I boring y'all already? I tell you something. Other else that was coming up. That uh, and you know these are not biblical principles as far as word for word. But you would go and if you seen an older person walking into a door building, you would do what? Oh, I'm so glad I preach in Alabama or Florida. Come on, somebody. Down south where they still know respect. And on. Um, man, it would go on and on. I, I think some of them was crazy. I, I really do. I, I was I, I was I lived a lot with my mama and, and my stepdad was, came out of the army and you know and you didn't wear a hat to the dinner table. No sir rebob. And don't take that thing off and lay it on the table neither. That was a no-no. And I'm like, my goodness, all I want to do is eat. I go to my room and eat. <laughs> and so, you know, some of them things is crazy. And and, 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 and I talked to a person one day, and, and I'm just I'm, I'm just going, I don't know, I'm going where the Lord's leading me to today. But uh, there was this young man that I had witnessed to, and I had witnessed to, and I had witnessed to, and, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he found out he had cancer. Young man. Young boy. And, uh, he went through cancer. He went through cancer. And, oh, I just watched him suffer. And there were times that God would call me to pray and fast to this young man. And go talk to him about Jesus. And, you know, you say, well, you don't have to talk to him. He's too young. No, oh, no, no. But nevertheless, the Bible says to uh, him that know do good and do it not to him to sin. So I don't know why God laid upon my heart. But I did. I went and talked with him, talked with him, talked with him. And I would, I, would, I would ask him, come church with me. Come church with me. And his folks wouldn't, you know, wouldn't allow that, wouldn't allow that. And finally, they said, okay. Finally, somebody say finally. finally. Finally, he said okay. And we had a revival. We had a minister to hear, and I had a lot of confidence in him. I wanted to pray for him because I still believe Jesus can heal cancer. How many agrees with that today? I don't want to believe it. I know he can. I've been seeing him do it. But when he got here, he had been going through radiation and chemo, and he didn't have no hair. And when he came in, he came in with a hat. And there was this big mouth. Oh, Lord. Come on, man. There was this, I don't know how to say it, it was a big mouth that never really went to church to have church always to find problem with folk. Maybe you've been around folk like that before. And I was shaking hands, greeting people on and on and on and on and on. And I happened to look up at this big mouth had his hands upon this little young boy's cap, jerking it off his head. And I thought off in a backslide for just a minute and waylaid him right there in the middle of church. I mean, uh, some of the old man come. How many of you ever had the old man just rise up for just a second? I done went running a football sprint towards him. <laughs> I had done witness to this young kid over and 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 all of a sudden I finally got him here somebody trying to run him out before he even get him. I can understand respect. I can understand that. But sometimes we must allow people to get into the house of God and let them learn respect before you begin to try to make them respect. They don't know no better. I think it was Jesus that hung upon the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they... Oh, I got some Bible readers on Amen. And he knew when he seen my eyes that I was, I, was, I was hot. And I told him, I said, get your hands off of him. I said it in the Holy Ghost, I hope. <laughs> and if he wasn't respecting me, I jumped over in the old flesh for just a second. I was angry. I was trying not to sin, not. I'm not encouraging to sin, but I was angry. I was protecting this young man like he was my own young man. He came to church with me. I wasn't going to let a religious, so-called respecter, uh, 
disrespect God's house over man's traditions. And he played it off and says, well, I got another hat out there in the truck I was going to get. It. That's a good answer, buddy. Just get your hand off the hat. Don't touch this. And so he sat down. And I, I just wanted to say that, to say this. You know, I do believe in respect. I, I believe it. I believe the United States of America, whenever the, the national anthem is played, I believe we ought to rise up out of our seats and put our hands over our heart and take our hats off our head and praise God for the men and women who died for our country. That we might can go home and lay our head down on our pillows at night. That's right. Stand to your feet today and thank God for the people who gave their life that we might can have freedom. There's people in this building today that are veterans and have served in the military. And I appreciate not only our veterans, but the ones that are still out there. You say, I'm not a standard in church. Well, you think about them ones that stood for you, and you just had your chance to stand for them. Amen. Amen. But well, that's just a little thing. It's the little things that we need back in America once again. It's the little foxes that spoil the mind. We've allowed little things to be taken out of church and it's not church no more. It's an entertainment house. And we come when some preacher gives a 15 minute sermonette and tickles the people's ears and they have ears. They, they, they heat themselves teachers that have itching ears. Tell them what they want to hear. Tell them that they can live in the relationships that they're living in. And still go to heaven and drink the stuff that they used to drink. And still go to heaven and smoke the stuff they used to smoke. And still go to heaven and talk the same way they used to talk. And still go to heaven, but you came to the wrong church today. But I believe that the way is still straight. I believe that the highway is still holiness. I believe if we make it, we're going to have to be clean. Or we won't go. I don't care what preacher you hire to stand over your cot, your, your casket and say some swelling words and you can fill his checkbook up with money. But that won't change your destination of your soul, friend. Right. If you've not been born again, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. A Sunday morning church visit won't do it. Sunday night, Wednesday night won't either. You got to go to Calvary. You got to bow at the feet of Jesus and kiss the sun lest he be angry. We're losing our respect. We're losing our respect for our law officers. Now, come on, for those who watch the news. We're losing our respect for our law officers. Our law officers have lost respect, some of them. Amen. They say they rape folks when they pull them over. They beat folks. They do this. There's funny officers. Man, we're living in perilous times. And you say, Brother Brandon, how are we going to fix this? What's the solution? we got to do this. we got to cut out with all of our cars. And it's, the, it's the fumes that are coming from the, from the exhaust that's causing all of our global warnings. And, and it's the reason that we have all of our hurricanes and all of our crazy weather. No, I tell you, back to the scriptures that in the last days there will be perilous times. And, and the Bible said there will be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in divers places and pestilence and I'm telling you this is a fulfilling of God's word and if you hadn't kissed the sun yet you better get to these altars before this service is over and say Lord I humble myself before you I'd rather kiss you now than have to kiss you later because regardless of whether you want to kiss him or not you will bow your knee every knee will bow every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord yeah. Better to go ahead and confess now right. than have to do it then and go to hell. Right. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 teaches us to be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Right. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 7 teaches us to respect police officers and correction authorities. God's put them there. Whether you like them or whether you don't. Right. So I picked on my wife a while back. She got pulled over by police. And <laughs> Just wait, Miss Mary. It gets better than that. <laughs> I picked on her on the phone and got, got, I just told her, you might have to slow that thing down, girl. And ever since then, I've been pulled over left and right. <laughs> Buy another Mustang. Huh? Buy another Mustang. Oh. <laughs> Let's go on to the next step. <laughs> Bless 
I was on Bubba Street the other day. I thought I was doing good. I already thought I was doing good. I mean, they ever just said I'm going to drive slow because these police are all over the place. You see where I put my police? I let it back in the back cubby hole. <laughs> I wish it would have been one of them fools. I wish it would have been them fools. You don't spare my clothes on Sunday morning. I ain't for a spare ticket for me. <laughs> but he got out. He was just, you know, I, I told my wife when he passed by me. I said, no, he turned around on me. And I'm sitting there, you know, I thought going turtle speed. Stop. <laughs> And he didn't turn the lights on. I said, nah, surely not. I just got pulled over the other day. It's like the first time I got pulled over since I was a long time ago. Let's put it that <laughs> And so this one pulls up, and there's a car in between them. The next thing I see him sail over there and got him behind me. I said, no, he's going to pull me over. <clears throat> he was so nice and respectful. And, uh, Told me I was going 60, I think. Well, I'm like, my God, you think that's speed, man? Come on, I'm going to slide a few miles an hour now. 60 miles an hour, I'm doing good. Because he told me the speed limit was 45. You sound like you ain't got no problem with me, you got a problem with your speed limit. You need to up that thing a little bit. How many of you want to say that for? Come on now. And then you go to the 8, 7, 25. You just about pretty much cut your car off in neutral and just let it out, right? <laughs> and all that would be great and all that would be nice if I wouldn't get right up beside the ones that pull you over, they're going 75. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. That'd be like me sitting here preaching you about drunk and you see me this weekend with a bottle in my mind. You're going to pull folks over speeding tickets. Make sure you drive speed limit everywhere you go. You're going to give somebody a ticket for your seatbelt. Make sure you're strapped up when you leave the house. But you know what? I respect my police officers, and so I kept my big old mouth shut. I was so nervous, I, I, I scribbled ink all over my bridge leg trying to sign that warrant. <laughs> police officers make me nervous except for them too. Praise God. <laughs> They join the church so they know how crazy I am. Right now. They don't make me nervous. But all them hoes throw a light on me. I ain't got nothing to hide, but I'm still nervous. Like, Hold on, go to jail. Lock me up. I don't like that place. I've been in that place before. It ain't a good place this day. <laughs> We're taught to respect our authorities because even though they may make us mad, I'm paying a seatbelt ticket. At night time, if, if the Booker man comes to. Burger, I can't say that in Alabama. You don't call police, do you? Go <laughs> get your shotgun out, don't you? But you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to what? Pray. You missed it all up. You're supposed to pray first. He told me I call a 911. You're supposed to do what as Christians? Pray, then call. Call the law. There you go. You got it right. Any trick question this time? Call them. Call the law and then do what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you got that all backwards? <laughs> I asked her if she wanted to preach. Y'all do that all backwards, huh? What do you do? Shoot, call the law, then pray? I hope I don't go to penitentiary for us. <laughs> we need to respect our authorities. Amen? Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13 teaches us to respect our ministers and our officers in our church. You'd be surprised if people get on the phone. Oh, I can't believe Brother Brandon said what he said. I don't even know why we got him as our preacher. We need to see if we can't get rid of him. You better watch it. God might get rid of you. Amen? I just don't like him. He's too young. He don't know nothing. He makes all these bad mistakes. You think you could do it better? Amen. <laughs> if you don't respect the police that pulled you over, respect your pastor. Yeah. I hate preaching stuff like that because that's my own position, but it's the word of God. First Thessalonians 5, 12 and 13. 
Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3 teaches us to honor and respect our parents. That's right. Yeah. Amen. You want to kiss the son? Respect your mom and your dad. I don't hear nobody but parents saying amen. Kids ain't said nothing. We had some laughs. How many knows it's all right to laugh in church? For a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I'm not a comedian. I'm a preacher. But if God gives me something to laugh about, I live too many years in depression. I'm going to laugh. Amen. But this is not a laughing matter when it talks about respecting your parents. It's a matter whether you live long or you die young. That's right. That's what he says. Obey your parents in the Lord. That you may live long upon the earth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Step number two, somebody say, Lord have mercy, give me the keys. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> a goodbye kiss. Genesis chapter 27 and 27 talks about Isaac giving Jacob a well, it was supposed to have been for Esau. Jacob stole that goodbye kiss. And I, I don't want to say a whole lot on this. Acts 20 and 37 talks about Paul was departing from some of his disciples and they fell upon his neck and kissed him. And uh, But this is what I want to say. This is what the Lord laid upon my heart. There's too many people dying with friction in their life for other people. And I'm telling you, friend, I don't care how many times you've been baptized. You've been baptized, you wash all the dye out your hair if you want to, but it's not going to do you any good if you die with friction between you and somebody else. You hear me? You can say all the sinners' prayers. You can, you can do whatever you want to do. You can join the church. You can be baptized 400 times. But if you have aught between you and somebody else and you die without making that thing right, you can't go to heaven. There's no way possible for you to go to heaven. Well, the Lord forgave me for that. But what you got to do is forgive somebody else. Oh Lord, I got all quiet again. You told me, okay, I'm telling you what the good book says. The, good book, the word of God says that if you come to the altar and you stand pray and you're reminded, look, 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 you ain't got to have something against somebody else. They can have something against you and you know about it and it's just as bad. Amen. That's what the word says. And you stand praying and you're reminded that your brother has aught against you. That's right. That word aught means anything against you. That's right. Now you can't please everybody, so don't go around trying to please everybody. But if you know that you've got some type of friction, let me just ask you this question. This is a good question to ask your own soul. Could you and anybody in this world be locked up in a doctor's office together and sit side by side? Or would you have to get up and move because there's so much tension between you and them? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know, preacher, if I could do that. Not, not with them right now. I just, I can't. They, you don't understand? I'm just telling you, as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you die with that, you can't go to heaven. There's no way. Because his word says, if you don't forgive your brother, then your heavenly Father will not forgive you. And there's no way to go to heaven without being forgiven. Am I preaching it right this morning? And so make sure, you know, I, I remind the Joseph and how his brothers done him so wrong. And, and he wanted to be mad at them. I mean, he had a right to be mad at them. They had treated him bad and, 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 and thrown him away. And he'd been sold to the Ishmaelites and been put into slavery and into the prison. And Potiphar's wife had, had accused rape. I mean, he had a bad time, y'all. And all of a sudden, it all happened because his closest people he loved betrayed him because of his favor and his glory from his father. And he said, you know what? He, matter of fact, he even had such tension in his relationship that he did try to go and and, 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 and get them back for it. You remember how he, how he took some of the things out of the, out of the house and threw them in his sack and was trying to get him for stealing? Yeah. He was trying, I'll get you back, buddy. And some of you got that attitude right now inside the sanctuary. God wouldn't let me tell you this. But, you know, well, you don't understand how they treated me. You don't understand how they hurt me. Yeah, you don't understand how much you hurt God, but he forgave you. Yeah. You took his own son's life at Calvary. Yeah. I took his own son's life at Calvary. Yeah. I don't think there's me in this sanctuary today. Maybe it is. I don't know. But ain't nobody in here can say they took my own son. That's a hard thing when you go to fooling them young ones. Right. Amen. Amen. But you think of Jesus today. He's stripped of everything. He's left to die. Why? Because of us. That's right. And God said, if I've done that for you, 
then you have got to do it for other people. And Joseph had in his mind, I'll show them brothers. But in the midst of his, he had done hid himself of an Egyptian uh, 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 right-hand man of Pharaoh. He had done changed his identity pretty much. And that, his brothers didn't know who he was. I don't know if he had something on his face. I, I don't know exactly how they didn't know who he was. I ain't never done that deep of studying. But I know they didn't know who he was. And in the midst of a lunch, he began to cry. And he couldn't restrain himself from crying. He stepped out of the lunch dinner and entered into a quiet room and had a breakdown and had a meltdown. Can I tell you, tension against other people will bring you down. If you want to be set free today, forgive them. Oh, you think, you, you, you think, well, as long as I'm holding this against them, I'm showing them how, no, you ain't doing nothing to hurt yourself. You're bringing yourself down. Somebody's hurt you. Oh, I feel this in the house of the Lord today. Somebody's hurt you. You're talking around. You're going to keep talking around. You're going to keep talking it around, but God says today is the day to let it go. Today is the day to kiss them goodbye. Today is the day to free them of their debts. Oh, I feel this in the spirit. You know, I'm talking to somebody. Ain't nobody in this church but me and you right now. You done locked out. You say, woohoo, I thought I was going to get out of here. At 12 o'clock, I thought I was going to get out of here. But I got calling my number. I told you, you came to the wrong church. Praise God. Today is your day. Today is your day to kiss the sun. You took these evil feelings. You took this unforgiveness. You harbor this unforgiveness and say, preacher, you don't know what, how I hurt. I'm telling you that God knows how you hurt. And if you'll cast your cares upon him, he cares for you. I can stop right there. It's strong. It's strong. Right there. A goodbye kiss. Don't you let them take you and you got something against somebody thinking you're going to uh, throw yourself right up there to glory and God's going to overlook you. Nope. You know it's in your heart. God knows it's in your heart. And those are the only two going to be there on your count of judgment that day. Yes. Only two. Yes. I don't know about y'all, I don't want to miss heaven. Yes. I don't want to miss it. On, so when you die, you don't get a chance. This ain't no football season. You don't get a chance to go and get you some more recruits and come back and be a better team. No! As the tree falleth, it's over with. It's over with. Every, every minute from that time forward, it's over with. On, you think about it for just a moment. You let that cockiness pride step in and say, well, I'm going to act like this. Well, act like that if you want to. It's your choice. But I chose one day at 22 years old. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Has anybody ever made me mad? A bunch of people's made me mad. But by the grace of God, I've forgiven them. And I've gotten over it. And I've learned to love them. You'd be shocked of the people who hurt you the most who end up being your best friends if you learn to forgive them. Amen. We get on children, and then we turn around and act like children. That's right. Older children, because younger children quickly forgive. Daddy can spank them, make them mad. They be coming jumping back in their lap. You mean? Forgot all about it. What if we had a short-term memory when it comes to holding grudges? Say, so, Lord, I forgot. What did they make me mad about? Mm -hmm. The bad thing about it is we forgot, but we still mad. Yeah. You ask, what did they make you mad about? Well... I don't remember, but I know it was bad. I know it was. Child, I wouldn't act like this if I wasn't mad. Husbands and wives do that all the time. Husbands and wives, the ones that sat at the, at, at, at the church chapel one day or at the courthouse, my, my, my part, but anyhow, said, for better or for worse. Now, why would he say that? Because there's going to be some worse days. I've had Mary for, oh, her worst day, devil is a lie. Better or for Sickness and in hell. Yeah. I could just preach all day long. You know that? Just, 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 just wasn't long ago preached man. Only from his age. Didn't live for the Lord. Mighty confidence. People loved him. Had great confidence in him. Why well, get sick so I hear? Go get some younger gal. Check that out now. Never quit preaching. Really? Trade your... 30, 60s in for 230s or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. He didn't marry no gal from Franklin, baby. She done horned me down, killed me, rose me up, and killed me again. 
and then called it off. And Derek Evans say something about it. <laughs> That's got me out going, Franklin, you better stay away from that rumor I'm telling you. <laughs> Die without having a goodbye kiss. Don't don't die. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It ain't worth it, man. Life's too short. We human. We're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna fail one another. We're gonna get mad at one another. We're a family. This church ain't, ain't got it all together. We get mad at one another. I'll tell you one thing, we get over. Amen. So I think they do anyhow. I do. I don't know about them, but I do. They get over. Amen. My last little point I want to make today is a betrayal kiss. Don't don't do that. You say, I'm going to kiss the son today. Don't kiss him like Judas did. Judas kissed him. But the whole time, he was selling him out. For what? For money. You know, it's a lot of folks that can, can get the, 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 the drunkenness and the, and the cussing and the fornication and all that. Oh, all, it's all good, but don't, don't touch my pocketbook. No, 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 Lord. I can't give you money. And the Bible says... That it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Now, there's been some controversy over that, I know. And I'm not saying I don't know what eye of a needle. Anyhow, the, the message was still stout. It was hard to do. Some people say eye of a needle is a hole to burn and go up under the gate. Regardless, it was still hard to do. Wow. And this, this little cocky man run up to Jesus. And, and he says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Some of you would ask that same question. What, what can I do to live for eternity with Jesus? Jesus said, you know the commandments. Some people say, don't worry about the commandments. Courthouses, even trying to take them off the wall. We don't have to do the commandments no more. Grace is come. We're sin abound. Grace did much more about mocking the word of God. But Jesus never said, get rid of the commandments. He said, I came not to destroy the law, the promise, but I came to fulfill the law. Amen. And so he said, do the command, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. And he broke, he said, oh, Lord, I've, I've done all of them from my childhood up. And I'm not calling him a liar, because I don't know his heart, and they did. And Jesus didn't call him a liar. So, but he did say this, he said, but you lack one thing. Can one thing keep me out of heaven? Yes, amen. And what Jesus said, he said, you lack in one thing, just one thing. Man, don't you know if I'm going to go the distance of doing half of it right, three quarters of it right, 85% of it right, I might as well go on and get it all right. Amen. Amen. He said, you like one thing. What is that, Lord? I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Will you? Sell what you have. You're probably a pretty rich person. Sell what you have and give it to the poor. Yeah. Conversation was over. The young man left. He left in great sorrow. Judas had the Lord's treasury. He had done got so used to seeing bucks and bucks, not, not beer, but money and money that he got his eyes off of the Lord. And as one of these Roman soldiers Went to a secluded area. Judas ran to them. He knew they was after him and said, What will you give me if I turn my Lord in? He said, We'll give you 30 pieces of silver. When he should have been like Naboth with his vineyard and say, I'm not for sale. What the Lord has given me, I'm not going to sell. Amen. And he ran and he kissed the Lord. In the Garden of Gethsemane, 30 pieces of silver sold the Lord out. Can I tell you today, there's people that are selling out and giving up on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But in your final decision today, you make sure you kiss the Son and you kiss Him right. Amen. Stand to your feet all over the sanctuary. If you're